Hello everyone and Anjo Hasio. My name is Philip. I am a researcher at the Center for Quantum Nanoscience here in Seoul and it's a great pleasure for me to host our first science talk. In this segment we're going to talk a lot about science, physics, chemistry, nanotechnology and a lot more and why it's so exciting for us. And today in our first show we're going to talk about the N in our name. What is nanoscience or nanotechnology? <laughs> So probably you guys have seen the latest Avengers movie. Let me show you my favorite scene. It's nanotech, you like it? Nanotechnology. Cool, right? But what is nanotechnology actually or nanoscience? Because the word nano itself is nowadays used almost everywhere from autovex to anti-aging cream to nano powder urine based tank fuel. You know, stuff we really need. But a lot of inventions based on nanotechnology are actually very useful. And more important, by exploring the nanoscale, we actually learn a lot about the world that we live in and how it works. Therefore, it's good to take a closer look. First of all, the word nano stems from the Greek word nanos, which simply means dwarf, so very, very small. And it's one of the unit prefixes we use to describe units such as the kilogram, the second, or the unit of length, the meter. And from everyday life, we know the kilometer, the meter, or the millimeter. But there's also the micrometer or the nanometer. So a nanometer is a billion times smaller than the meter, or a million times smaller than a millimeter. So how small is that actually? Well, one of the smallest things that we can still grab is a human hair. A human hair is usually between 10 to 100 micrometers. So that's already a thousand times smaller than yourself. But it's still a thousand times too large for the nanometer scale. So only if your hair had hair, which is definitely plausible for some human beings, then you would arrive on the nanoscale. So to further illustrate that, let me show you four objects that only extend over a couple of nanometers. First, a glucose molecule, the building block of sugar. Second, uh, DNA, the carrier of the human genome. Third, the average brain size of a Teletubby. Tinky Winky is very slow. And last but not least, the, amazingly, the current generation of transistors in a computer. That thing that switches between one and zero. But what is nanotechnology actually good for? So indeed, one of the immediate benefits of nanotechnology is by simply making things smaller, as we have seen earlier um, in the case of the transistor, by simply putting more of the same objects into the same space. And Today, even an average mobile phone has um, a better, higher computing power than the computer that was used to coordinate the moon landing uh, thanks to incredible advances in device fabrication. Another example is that materials behave um, differently when you shrink them in size. For example, for their optical properties. Gold, which is usually nice, yellow and shiny, changes its color when, you sh uh, when it's in the form of nanoparticles. Um, the wavelength of absorbed light is roughly proportionate to the particle diameter and shifts from blue to red for particles um, at around 100 nanometer. Another example is surface tension, the tendency of a fluid um, to wet a surface. Nanostructured surfaces can greatly increase the area of the surface and in that way consequently also change the surface tension. And this can prevent um, a surface to get wet, wet simply um, by making it energetically unfavorable to cover that surface by water. So this is obviously great for non-sticky frying pans or clothes that don't get dirty and wet. Um, in, in Germany, uh, uh, where I'm from, in the city of Hamburg, in the red light district, they used it for something else. They coated the surfaces of public walls um, with a nano coating to prevent uh, public urination, since the wall is simply able to pee back. 
And last but not least, even physics as we know it doesn't work anymore on the nanoscale and the weird and wonderful world of quantum mechanics starts to take over and to dominate where particles are waves and waves are particles and cats are dead and alive at the same time. This is where the cue of our name comes from and we're going to talk a lot about uh, quantum more in the upcoming episodes. That's all folks, my name is Philip and see you on the next episode of Science Talks.